Now, real quickly, I don't want you to confuse because you hear a lot of stuff. In fact, if your theology comes from chick comic books or you know movies and everything, you think that the 200 million horsemen are the Chinese army. I mean, how many YouTube videos can you see about that? The greatest loss of human life arrives. Trumpet six releases four demons. Look what happens. In verse 12, one woe is past, two more woes are coming. The sixth angel sounds. I heard from the four horns, the golden altar, the sixth angel sounded, said, release the four angels bound by the great river Euphrates. So the four angels prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, released and they kill one third of all people. A third. That's a lot of people. That's 2.4 billion if it happened today. Now the number of the army of horsemen was 200 million. It's the Chinese. How many times do you hear that? I mean, you, and, and there's whole videos and it shows them and everything. But wait a minute. Trumpet 6 releases four demons allowed to lead a demonic army. It's already been described. They look like locusts. They have hair like women. They have tails like scorpions. They're not people. There's some kind of horrible monsters that are in the pit and they come out of the smoke. But they go on when the sixth trumpet comes and destroy one-third of all humans after they've tormented them for five months. Now look at this. This event is not to be confused with a later human army launched by Trumpet 7. that's led by demons, but it's humans, and they go to Armageddon. So don't confuse the 200 million with Armageddon. That's the only reason I'm saying that. And a third of mankind was killed. It's the largest loss of human life ever. So what we're seeing here is the seven trumpet judgments culminating. We've already seen in chapter 8, the grass, the sea, the water, the darkness, then the demon locust, then this massive army that follows, headed by the destroyer that kills a third of all humans. Now we're going into chapter 10. Remember I said we keep going between earth and heaven? Now we're back up in heaven. These are called parenthetical. They kind of explain stuff. In chapter 10, we meet this mighty angel with a little book uh, and seven thunders and the two witnesses that show up in chapter 11 that's going to be tomorrow. But before we go there, let's add up what's happened. On the fourth seal in chapter 6, a fourth of all humanity died. And then 33% die in the sixth trumpet. Just adding those together, I know that it's a percent of the percent, but you know, just to quickly do it, it's 58, it's half of humanity is dying. Now look at the end of chapter 9 before we get to 10. Despite all the horrors, all the cataclysms, all those monsters, people are still chained by their sins of rebellion that only Christ can release us from. Point, sin is more powerful than we realize. Some of us think we can play with sin, we can kind of dabble with it, we'll kind of keep it under control. I mean, a lot of people, they think they can kind of manage their sin. You cannot manage your sin. It's reptilian. Sin is like a reptile. You know, reptiles get bigger and bigger and bigger the older they get. That's why dinosaurs are so big. That's why they all were on the ark. You can have a dinosaur only this big on the ark, and it'll get really big if you let it. See, sin is like that. Look at this. But the rest of mankind who are not killed by those plagues. The 58% that have been killed, the 42% that were left, do not repent of the works of their hands. What are they into? Well, they worship demons. Can you imagine a demon that can go through any wall, that knows every language? If you can be in contact with them, what a good counselor they'd be. They'd be able to tell you stuff nobody else knew. They could make you win every deal. They could help you in military. They're like the ultimate drone. You can't shoot them down or, or anything. And people start wanting demonic power. And Satan, if you want it, it's available. You know who one of the most demonized person that's ever lived on earth that killed 50 million people? His name is Hitler. Hitler was a, a very loser type living in Vienna, couldn't hold a job, couldn't, he was like an artist and you know, hung out in coffee shops. And he got introduced to Norse mythology and went to the museum. I mean, you ought to read the history of Hitler. And he began to dabble in the occult, and he, he became one of the most used by Satan people that's been alive until the Antichrist. 
And look what he did. He got Germany to march to their death and to break every rule of civilization and to kill and exterminate not just the Jews, that was horrible enough, but the gypsies and the handicapped and anybody that wasn't Aryan. That's how powerful Satan is with Hitler. Well, look what he does with everybody else. They, they want the demons. They want idols. The real God is doing all this stuff and they want to make an idol of gold and silver and brass and stone they can carry with them in wood. And, and they wouldn't repent of murdering. They wouldn't repent. Oh, that's an interesting word. Sorcery. Right-click that. It's pharmakeia. That's the word for drugs. Sorcery. There's such a connection. Now, it's not me. It's the New York Times. You ought to read what the New York Times says that your generation, I'm not saying you, but your generation's overuse of marijuana is affecting their minds and making them have all kinds of psychiatric problems because marijuana affects your mind. And all the other drugs do too. But what, what's the primary thing that drugs do? My mind and your mind is a portal between the physical world and the spiritual world. It's the portal. It's the doorway. And if you loosen the locks and the doors and leave them open, I mean, if you live in the swamp and you, and you cut your screen, what comes in? Mosquitoes. If you open your mind to the spirit world, what's out there? Well, I just described them. Lots of monsters. And sorcery is the drug-induced opening of the mind to the spirit world. And boy, they come in. And we've seen all the way through the Gospels, people possessed and demonized and everything else. On top of that, sin number five is sexual immorality. Do you want to know what the world is increasingly going to, from today until the very end, it's going to be more and more demonism, more and more idolatry, more and more murdering, more and more drug use and witchcraft, and more and more un- restrained sexual immorality. It's not a very pleasant place ahead. And finally, they're thefts. 